Hi everyone, I'm Jean-Marie Silvello and I'm the teacher of Database 2, which is a second year course of the master's degree in computer engineering of the University of Padua. The course this year will be in the first semester, so running from September, the end of September, to the end of December, beginning of January, basically. So now let's see why you should take this course and be one of my students. Database 2. Here you can see my website if you want to gather more information about me and my email address if you would like to ask more information about the course or other research methods. The program of the course. So what you know or you should know is relational modeling. And the relational modeling is based on IR, ER diagrams, UML diagrams or other tools of modeling, important DBMS like PostgreSQL, MySQL. And you learn how to model the problem at hand with the relational model. So with tables and constraints determined by the relational model. Then you learn how to query these databases to retrieve the data that you need or you need to provide to your users. Relational databases are incredibly important. They were important and they still are very important. And a lot of business is based on relational databases and many, many problems can be successfully solved by the use of relational databases. But now there are, there are new databases and new ways to solve real world problems. And for instance, graph modeling. So in this course, we will focus on graph modeling and we will learn when the relational model is not the best solution for the problem at hand and when using a graph or a graph DBMS can be the best solution. Graph databases are extremely useful and they are growing and now they are central in the research world as well as in the industrial world. We will learn about how to model the reality thanks to ontologies and then how to use RDF. We will learn about property graphs where we can add labels and properties not only to nodes but also to the edges connecting the nodes. We will learn um, RDF based graph DBMS like GraphDB and property graph based DBMS like Neo4j. We will take real world problems, we'll solve them, we, we, we ingest the data into one of these DBMSs according to the model we defined, and we will learn how to query the systems. So we'll go from real world problems that I will present to you. We take the data, we process the data, we clean the data, so we will be a bit of data scientists somehow. And then here we need and we will learn about Python, we will use Jupyter Notebooks, we will take Kaggle data sets and we will uh, compete in some challenges. We will learn about how to model the data by using ontologies and property graphs, as I said, and then how to store this data in graphs and how to query graphs. So we will learn about the SparkQL query language and the Cypher query language. We will explore the world of the semantic web and the linked open data, learning how to share data on the web and make data interoperable, machine readable and reusable by both machines and humans. So we will move beyond 
what you have learned in web applications, in database one, and we will learn about the semantics of the data, but not only how to interpret the semantics, but how to model it, how to share it, and how to use it in advanced services. And we will discuss some advanced topics too, related to graph databases, but also to relational databases at this point. So we will discuss about data citation. How can we cite data and refer to a data used in a scientific article, for instance? We will discuss open science and what it means and how we can achieve it. We will learn about data pricing and data provenance. These are core topics in nowadays research in databases, but also in search and other related areas. What are the prerequisites of this course? Well, you need to know the relational model very well, even though we will uh, dive into the relational model and we will learn something more, we will study it for what is concerned with advanced relational pro um, research problems. But you need to know what it is, you need to have uh, studied the relational model, used it, and realized the relational uh, and used that relational DBMS. Then you need to know the SQL query language, some programming languages, especially Python and or Java. Then you need to know algorithmics, especially algorithmic paradigms like divide and conquer, dynamic programming, the greedy paradigm, and time and space complexity analysis. The course and teaching method is structured uh, in, as in frontal lesson. For this year, the lessons are in dual mode, so you can uh, follow the lesson both in presence in the classroom or remotely from your home, since all the lessons will be streamed online. Careful that the lessons will not be recorded and videos will not be available online. So you may decide if you want to come to the university, strongly suggested if you can and if your health conditions are good or, um, and so you, 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 can, you can come to the classroom. Otherwise, you can stay at home and follow lessons online, but synchronously. We will do flipped classrooms. So there will be homeworks activities and in classroom, you will be asked to present your homework and your solutions to your colleagues that may ask questions. And so you can discuss the topics of the course. Of course, there will be also normal lessons. There will be hands-on exercises throughout the course. So for every topic we learn, if we learn ontologies, then you will have to use ontologies to model a real world problem that I will show you. Then we will learn about our new query language. We will do exercises about this query language in class, and then you will do exercises at home and we will discuss them in class. All the learning material will be available online, even though there are some reference books that you can find in the syllabus. All reference books are available in the university library. There will be some research and industrial seminars from experts in the area. So we will discuss knowledge base creation with um, a professional and an expert from the US. We will learn about property graph with experts from that area. We will learn about explorative search in databases and so on. We will learn about open science. During the course, I will provide you the schedule of these uh, seminars. And the seminars will be open also to other students and other people outside of our class. Seminars will also be recorded and if the teacher agrees, they will be available online, different from the normal lessons. The exam 
So you see that the minimum rate, of course, is zero and the maximum is 33. That basically means uh, summa cum laude. Uh, there will be three projects. One team project on ontological modeling and RDF. I will give you this project by the end of October and you will have a little bit more than one month to complete the project in group and then you will present the results to the class in a let's say a public presentation this project will provide from zero to six points then there will be in parallel mostly one individual project that i will give you around mid november about graph querying and explorative search this is individual so you will be given some topics and a database publicly available, and you will have to perform some queries on the database to uh, achieve a certain goal. We will be more precise, of course, but this is more about querying. Then you will have the last team project. The team might be different from the previous project. And this will be on property graphs. Here, I will give you some real data that you will have to process, to clean, of course, to understand, and then to model accordingly to a property graph, store the data in Neo4j, and then uh, build some services on top of that. This team project will be given to you by the beginning of December, and you will present your results to the class after Christmas holidays, so by mid-January. So as you see with these three team projects, with these three projects, sorry, and homeworks, you will have up to 18 points. And then there is the final exam. This is mandatory and up to 15 points. The final exam will be composed by a quiz, so a multiple choice test, if you pass the multiple choice test, you will have some exercises to do. For, as for all the exams in the computer engineering degree, there are four exams per year, two in the winter session, one in the summer session, and one in the autumn session, so in September. If there are five or less people enrolled in an exam, the exam will be online, um, oral, sorry. And maybe also online, we will see, but oral. So you will have the final exam with the multiple choice and uh, questions and the exercises, basically for the first two terms, but then for the summer and the autumn terms, probably you will have an oral exam. Thank you very much for your attention. I really hope you will be one of my students in this course. And please, if you have any question, don't hesitate to contact me. So see you very soon by the end of September.